Good morning everyone and welcome back to another episode of An Ecologist Plays. We are again back in the Amazon and we've got a nice fire going. We've got some rattlesnake meat that's cooking over there. It's raining. Our water uh, collectors here, the coconut bowls, they're getting filled up. And we are also just quickly going to go have a look, see if we can kill a tapir, which will give us a nice bit of meat in preparation or well, to get our uh, protein up which currently is standing on zero now we do have here some raffia palm seeds the, the unknown nuts that are here that have fallen down there's a little mouse as well oh well meat is meat hello little johnny goodbye johnny and uh, let's continue eating some nuts here we'll take the mouse a very big mouse that that's relatively good eating oh there's some more Palm nuts here. Brilliant. And a coconut. Stupid piece of Okay. And our guy got very upset about the fact that our axe just broke. Again. In this case, we do have obsidian stone that we just got from the, or that I just collected in the cave. So might as well make an obsidian axe. And then there is something that I have noticed, not sure whether you saw it while I was crafting the axe there, but look right under the palm over here. Hello, Mr. Rattler. I see you. And there we go, we hear you now. Notice the vibration of the tail. Okay, it's more on this side. If we stand over here, we should be able... No, it's turning itself. It's in the bush there. But rattlesnakes, again, as I've mentioned, there we go. The tail is rattling a bit on the side there. Uh, making very, very quick movements with their tails. And the tails are, the scales of the tail there, are semi-overlapping. And that is then what gives it a that rattle sound. It's not because there are little bits inside. Instead, it is because the scales of that tail there are slightly overlapping. And when you move it, or when it moves the... There was a tapir here a moment ago. I heard him run away. But as the tail moves, the, the scales rub against one another and that creates that rattle sound. Now, snakes do tend to try to give you warning instead of just biting you. They, there we go, that was good. Okay, that's it, gone, tapir gone. Now, snakes don't just want to bite you. Instead, they do want to give you fair warning. They don't want to waste their venom on you. Uh, but if you then get too close, they will obviously bite. Okay, and we are over encumbered, so I'm just going to throw out some bones here and well I did now also eat a can of meat while I was dirty so you know what I've got a parasite we'll address that a little bit later but as I was saying snakes don't want to bite you instead they will use that as a last resort instead they want to warn you ahead of time I think I've yeah I've burned the rattle meat rattlesnake meat and I don't know why I'm eating things when my hands are dirty but oh well and we now also have lost a bit of sanity there because of the burnt meat that I was eating. So that's also not good. The meat is cooked and not burnt. Brilliant. We can add some more on there. Unfortunately, we have lost some rattlesnake meat. That's okay. Tapir meat is by far the best meat here. So we're just going to again get in tip-top shape before we head off. Oh, great. It stopped raining, obviously, the moment we went, we came outside. There's a little baby tapir again. Again, notice the little lines that it has. Many animals will have lines on their body, lines or spots. And it is designed, or it's that way, to try and break up the outline. If that tapir was just one color, it would be a little bit easier to spot him. I never like those sounds. Always sounds as though there's, as if there's a cougar or something sniffing around the area. Anyway, the uh, tapirs, as I was saying, if it were one color, you would be able to see that little baby tapir very easily. However, with it being a dark color and then with spots on there, it's a little bit more difficult because, especially if it's resting on the forest floor during the daytime, it kind of looks like a piece of ground which has got the uh, light shining through through the canopy and falling onto the ground. That's kind of what the little white markings on the skin would actually mimic. 
So it's trying to mimic a piece of ground with sunlight striking it from through the canopy. And finally, it is raining and we can hopefully get a little bit cleaner. We do also have a... There we go. Oh, there's a little tape here again. Hello, little one. Bye, little one. Not going to hunt you. There should be a little place here. There we go. It fills up with water so we can wash ourselves as well. Only fills up with water during rain, however. So you can't always use this. Okay, caiman lizard, right over there. Some more food if we want it. However, we are now pretty set, in actual fact. We should now be perfect. We need some carbs, we need some meat. We are now clean. We can eat the tapir meat without any problems. And we can put the last ones on there. Okay, and we are off again. Now, as you can see, our vitals are completely full, well, basically full. Uh, two pieces of tapir meat really does wonderful things for a person. And we are just... Oh, got a fright there with the thunder. Suddenly just started. <laughs> now, if we look on our map, we are currently here. And we want to get to that grappling hook point there so that we can go to Lambda 2. And it seems there's probably going to be a pass through the mountainside over here or here. So I think let's stick to the cliff face and see what we can find. If we can find our path through somewhere in that direction over there, which is a little bit west. Seems like there's a way up here. We can have a little look. Let's follow the tape here, baby. Nothing yet. We'll check back with you when I find it. Okay, so I have just found the entrance. However, I have seen, I have noticed these orange mushrooms over here that got rid of the parasite that we just that we had until now. So that's brilliant. Did also run into a Goliath bird eat a spider, but uh, I <laughs> thankfully spotted it just as I uh, rounded a rock and I managed to just shoot it with a bow to get rid of it so that I could pass. There's another scorpion. We're just going to go past him. There's no need for us to kill him. We're not going to come through this cave again. So we can just carry on here. Across this log bridge in a little cave area. Very nice. Let's see what is on the other side. Yeah, and there we go. There is the exit point. Awesome. The cave exit right over here. And a place to grapple down. So a nice climbing spot. We also now should have that on our map. So we came through from the plane through this area over here and exited over here. We now are heading in a southeasterly direction to the other grappling point and then subsequently Lambda 2. So southeast, that's the direction. So let's head off in that direction, see if we can find anything interesting or dangerous on the way. Okay, there. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Ah, hello and goodbye. Yo. <laughs> uh, I knew I should be careful. I heard the armadillo and I was just taking off leeches and then the next moment this guy jumped me. Oh, goodness. Okay. That's not something you want while you are wandering around in the forest, the guy jumping you. But we've got some more custard apples here. Always nice. We're just going to eat some of that. And retrieve our arrow from this guy. And then harvest him. However, we are very full in terms of weight in our backpack. So we're probably just going to drop most of the things that we get from him. We're not going to hold on to the meat. And we're probably going to drink the coconut milk and drop that. And now we should be like just under 50 kilograms when we have our arrow equipped. So, sorry, Mr. Jaguar, but uh, we are not going to be eating your meat soon. Okay, I was just about to start talking about forest structure when we were interrupted by Mr. Mr. Jaguar. Now, overall, when you are looking at forests around the world, they tend to have specific layers, which we call strata. And uh, that's, uh, that's plural for stratum. Stratum being a layer strata being a number of layers. Oh, this is a nice little spot with the 
Little waterfall here. I didn't know there was a jaguar in this area. Okay, good to know. Uh, but now that we've got clean water, we can also just wash ourselves. But as I was saying, the forests overall, wherever you are, will have different layers. And the number of layers and the density of the layers and what each layer consists of will be determined by what f type of forest you are and where in the world you are. Now, if you're looking at forests around here in uh, the southern part of South Africa, where I am, we have got all the layers. They're not necessarily as dense as you would find in jungle areas. There's uh, another creepy little cave over here. Uh, it's a dead end. Okay. But there would be some iron ore potentially in this cave here. But the, the layers, as I was saying, of the forest in, around here, not quite as dense as you would have in tropical rainforests, but at least they, they are present. Now, the main layers that you'd have in a forest would be the canopy, which is the continuous layer right at the top. And, uh, well, not quite at the top, but, you know, the continuous layer that forms the top of the forest. Then you would have your emergence, and those are the trees. Oh, hello, Pickery. <laughs> Uh, then you would have your emergence, which would be big trees, like the big Brazil nut trees that we've got in the forest here, that actually grow through the canopy to the top. And they, their tops of, or the tops of the emergent trees are above the tops of the canopy trees. And then underneath you would have your subdominant layer, or your, your subcanopy, and those would be things like these trees over here. This one here hasn't quite reached the canopy at the top there, but it is still growing. It's waiting for a nice gap at the top there to go and fill that. And that would then be a lot of... Well, some trees do prefer the more shaded environment that you would find under the canopy. And other trees in the subdominant layer or the subcanopy are simply canopy trees waiting to grow through to the canopy. Now, we need a way to get down there. We I accidentally took a bit of a wrong turn, so let's just head off. I've got a suspicion we're going to need Psychotria soon. Might as well harvest. I remember Psychotria used to make a, the ayahuasca, which we'll probably be making again at some point. Now, as I was saying, the underneath the subdominant layer then, you have the shrub layer, which will be most of the uh, larger shrubs that you will find growing on the ground. Here, the palms over here, they would form part of the shrub layer and the little banana trees here, or bananas, they are also part of the shrub layer. It also generally find a lot of different shrub species also occurring in the shrub layer. And then of course saplings of the bigger trees also being in the shrub layer. And then lastly you'll have the ground layer which would be these bromeliads here or grasses or anything like that which you would also find growing right in the shadiest part of the forest. Right there on ground level, where very little sunlight reaches them. And they definitely need a whole bunch of adaptations in order to survive there in the understory, or right at the bottom there, because of the lack of sunlight. Interesting, another cave. I'm not sure whether we've been here before. I don't think we have. But it seems nothing really important in that cave. So if you're looking then at the forest, you'll find that each species will grow there where the light requirements suit it most. So if it's a species that needs a lot of sunlight, it will grow in the canopy or in the emergent layer if it is large enough and has a strong enough trunk to support it to get right to the top. If it can survive right at the bottom there in very little light, you'll find it growing on ground level. And they will then have special adaptations to actually get as much sunlight as possible. Usually very large leaves like this plant over here, or they will have a red uh, on the underside of the leaves so that they can uh, reflect any light that passes through their leaf back through the chlorophyll. So the light will then go through the leaf twice. I'll probably talk about that a little bit later at some point in our series. But here we are again, another little rattlesnake. It was another little rattlesnake. I've been very fortunate today, and I'm, my luck is probably going to end soon, <laughs> in uh, whenever I just happen to stop, we I then spot something like a rattlesnake or a goliath bird, eat a spider or something along those lines. However, we are full. Uh, we can't carry anything else, so let's just carry on. Let's see where we are. 
44, 29. Oh, goodness. Okay, we have gotten lost. We need to actually get back northeast. So we need to head back in that direction. We need to head for 42, 25. That is actually where we need to go to get to the uh, grappling point. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so we have arrived at 42, well, 25, almost 24. And we are at the climbing place. So we might as well head up. Let us see what waits for us at the top. Okay, bamboo. That is what awaits us at the top here. Interesting. Okay. Very, very interesting. Gives me a very much Stonehenge vibes here. Hmm. So on this rock, again, there are some drawings here, especially of a blue man with a very, very prominent feature. And you'll very often find that in cave paintings. I'm pretty sure I've got a photo of Bushman art or sand art, cave art, that I have taken years ago. Oh, look at that. There's a bed here. Oh, that's going to make things so much easier. Because we are actually quite tired. Our character here is very, very tired. It is time for a bit of a nap, which will then be perfect. So... See you in a moment. Okay, it is now night time. Night time is best time to do anything. So we'll just put out our little bowls here. Get some water collected there. Now, as I was saying, I've, uh, hopefully we'll have a painting up on the, on the screen there of a Bushman painting, which generally shows the guys very, 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 very well endowed. Um, yeah, I could in insert a joke here, but I'll probably not do that now. <laughs> and I'm actually not quite sure why, but it may just be to show how awesome they are as, as an individual. I'll have to read up a bit more about cave paintings. But overall, it seems the same principle applies here, where when they are painting, they are showing themselves as very, very well endowed. I highly doubt the little blue line there indicates a coteca or that penis cord. Instead, I'm pretty sure that just is the actual penis. Uh, so let's just make a little fire here. Or insert fire here. We've got a small stick. Oh, I need to go and collect a whole bunch of sticks. So I'll be back in a flash. Okay, so the fire is made. We can light that in a moment. However, we only have one of the two ingredients that we need for ayahuasca. We have the psychotria berries, but we do not have the banisteri hopsis vines yet. So let's just throw out some bones here to make space and open up some weight for our uh, in, in our backpack and let's go have a look see if we can find a big old brazil nut tree which should then have the banisteriopsis vine growing along it okay it seems there are no big trees in this section and there is a, another big old uh, rock blocking the way here O-T, and again the blue uh, well-endowed man, spirals, handprints, and a whole bunch of squiggly lines. Let's see what Mia has to say about that. Mia, I found the Lambda location, and it looks nothing like our tent. <laughs> then what is it? Oh, it's a stone circle. Yeah, it looks like a place of worship. With the Yabawaka and Bai Ayahuasca. Look, the map pointed to this place. Maybe if you find its owner, you'll learn how to get out of there. You just have to keep going. I don't know if I can make it. It, it took me so long to get here. You can make it. I'm here with you, aren't I? And I'll be with you every step of the way. Just stay strong for me. I will. Just. Okay, there's another rattlesnake right over there. Just remember about him. He's not in our way as where he is, so we're just going to ignore him. But we do need to still get Banisteriopsis vines. Now, there should be some big Brazil nut trees. Oh, hello. I just got an oopsie. Uh, okay, let's see. How bad is it? It's probably on me legs. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's not nice. Uh, let's use just a leaf bandage, see if that helps. 
Now that's something I have learned. Always make sure that you have got Molinaria leaves or leaf bandages at the ready because you never know when things are going to go a little bit south. Now, uh, oh, ant's nest. Let's not walk over that. Should be a Brazil nut tree somewhere. Okay, here is a Brazil nut tree and there is Banisteriopsis vine. Okay, brilliant. And let's head back without falling off a log. Okay, perfect. We made it back without falling off again, <laughs> which is good. Now we should have everything for that ayahuasca. Oh, here we go. There's the one. The passage is blocked. Hey, Mia. I need your help for a sec. I've got a rock in front of me covered in tribal drawings. Can you help me with the translation? Sure. Tell me what you see. Okay. There's two people, one black and one blue, with a rock between them. There's also an inscription. O-T. Hmm. It might be a sign for a sort of spiritual passageway. The natives believe their ancestor spirits still live in the jungle and can be reached through certain rituals. The passageway also prevents evil spirits from returning. Great, but that sure as hell doesn't help me right now. I need a sign for a physical passageway. Wait. I have an idea. Over and out. Okay. Again, it says, make and drink another ayahuasca. So, that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be falling over orchids again, everybody. It is time. Okay, we've got the fire going. All we need now is to make the ayahuasca by again adding the Psychotria viridis and the Banisteriopsis vine. The two ingredients of ayahuasca. And time for some backstory. Another kid. Let's chase a kid through the jungle. That's not dodgy at all. Whoa. So trippy. Okay, another passageway. Ooh. Pretty. Again, seeing the same patterns everywhere. Always the spiral. Okay, always the people with very big anatomical features I uh, don't think Jake is feeling too good whoa wow even on these rocks handprints and O-T interesting Aha. Oh, <laughs> I actually got a fright there. I thought I did something wrong. Yo, oh, okay. Okay, that doesn't look like it belongs in the jungle. Looks like a hospital to me. Hospital chairs. Always have the most uncomfortable chairs. So let's see what happens here. Is this my office? There's a book about that one uh, plant that we can see growing around. It's the plantain lily. You can read this if you wanted to. Um, so that's known as Funkia, the genus of that. What have we got here? Ah, the indigo blue leptonia. Okay, so you can also, again, I'll just leave it off a little bit. You can pause and read that if you wanted to. 
Yo, okay, so here's a long one about making yab uh, ayahuasca. It seems um, very interesting. Yeah, so it does say, it, it talks a little bit about the side effects of the uh, ayahuasca as well. But very, very interesting, uh, but a bit about the, the cultural and the spiritual use thereof. Some more about rituals and again about the Yaba Waka and the use of ayahuasca. Um, and so there it goes about the ayahuasca, the uh, liana of the souls. Uh, so it's a very nice little bit of background information about all that. So this was all in Jake Higgins' book, it seems. And then this page here deals with some kind of random weird fungus it looks like one that i know as dead man's fingers and looks like a fungus and an algae that i know as dead man's fingers um but yeah so this is quite interesting he talked he was wondering about whether he should write about all of this um so that's going to be interesting to find out exactly what that's about there's a nice little doggo yeah it's a typical office of a naturalist or person that's been spending time in the jungle yeah you can see Interesting, the little photos here, woven baskets, but also the totem, the monkey's head, and the totem there, and the feathers present, USB, and there we go. There, That's also that there is the gift that we saw in the previous uh, hallucinogenic episode, where the gift that Mia received from the Yavawaka. Okay, so let's find a way out of here, maybe out this door. Okay, whole storage area and a whole bunch of what looks like the books that are yo, lots and lots of books not selling very well it seems. The book was quite good, but people aren't interested in lost tribes, deforestation or global warming. We don't think about such things until it's too late. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so there's a lot of money requested for something, uh, which will probably be for medical expenses. There we go. So there's, oh goodness. Okay, hospital stay, 200,000 US dollars. That's that's a lot of money. Ain't nobody got money for that. What have we got here? Okay, so then there was a medical... A group of Molucorp which was in, interested in some they of care about themselves until tragedy strikes. They were involved people just don't care. And it they wasn't any different this time. No one took an interest in them unless there was some money to be made. And that Molucor seemed to be a medical group. Uh, so yeah, they were obviously involved interested in some medicinal use of some of the things talked about you in the think book. I'm selfish just like everyone else, don't you? Maybe you're right. Maybe I should have just given up. What happened? Why are you here? I know what drove us. But it doesn't justify anything if not for me you wouldn't have to go back to the jungle so mia seems to have been very very sick let's see what it says here so there's a tumor of the left lung seems to have lung cancer and the book received a mediocre review okay and moving on here yeah. I, I... I didn't know. Okay, so there's a bit of backstory. Now, we are full health, full everything again after drinking the ayahuasca. And I am just going to be making a small shelter, saving the game. And that's where we're going to end today's game. Thank you again for coming along on this adventure. 
Unfortunately, I won't be able to have a video again next week. It is Christmas time after all, so I will be spending time with the family in the meantime. So until next time, which will be around about New Year's, I hope you stay safe, enjoy the festive and Christmas season, and I will see you guys again soon.